Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS issues renewed warnings on employee retention credit claims. False claims generate compliance risk for people and businesses claiming credit improperly. And you thought the warnings were dead, but no. The warning has been revived and is now renewed like the evil Emperor Palpatine and like Star Wars. In fact, if you misinterpret just one of the many complicated tax code changes during the pandemic, you're just as bad as that, like, that horned, shirtless, bear hide wearing face painted dude that, that raided the Capitol building on January 6th. That guy was terrifying. Like some crazed, wild Viking slash Nazi, armed to the teeth, hatchet in hand, ready to take the scalp of any police officer who dared to step in his way. Attempting to stop the violent and bloody rampage. It's totally it's totally just like the action that like a berserker would do in the middle of a of a mindless, violent, and out of control episode. Like Logan Bloody Nine Fingers from those books by Joe Abercrombie or whatever his name is, you know? I'll tell you what. You know, don't give me that crap that you just forgot to carry the one on step 376 of the 2,179 step tax worksheet, you maniac. Really did it. You maniac! You blew it up! Uh, oh, God! You all to hell! Your miscalculation put not only this country at grave risk, but also just one thin hair's breadth away from causing, like, mass extinction of the human population over the entire world? There is no exaggeration here. This is not hyperbole. One hair's breadth away, I tell you. Now, if you would excuse me, all this talking about hair's breadth has made me hungry for some carrot cake. But honestly, like, if you can't even fill out the 2,179-step new tax form correctly, you deserve to be frog-marched through the swamp, on display, like some kind of animal. We demand high levels of mental competency from every citizen at every level in this country, dang it. This is calling for mental competency tests for those politicians over the age of 75. What do you ridiculous. think about that? Ridiculous. Would your husband ever take one of those? <laughs> I mean, we haven't even discussed, we would never even discuss something like that. Seriously. Maybe you need your head examined. Anyways. And I uh, had uh, these terrible headaches, was diagnosed with having a, a uh, anyway, they had to take the top of my head off a couple times, <laughs> see if I had a brain. IR 2023-40, March 7, 2023, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today issued a renewed warning urging people to carefully review the employee retention credit, the ERC guidelines, before trying to claim the credit as promoters continue pushing ineligible people to file. The IRS and tax professionals continues to see third parties aggressively promoting ERC schemes on radio and online. So obviously we've had a lot of changes to the tax code way more than usual in the last few years. A lot of it trying to kind of loosen the tax code to get money flowing in an attempt to help the economy uh, during the pandemic. The predictable kind of outcome of that kind of change is that there's going to be a lot of uncertainty in the environment. They put out a lot of laws which are going to have problems with them and loopholes and whatnot because obviously usually laws are going to be changing slowly over time. And as that happens, all the all the kind of kinks and whatnot hopefully get worked out, kind of like rolling out a software program or something like that that has bugs, but just slowly roll it out and you kind of fix the process uh, going forward. So we're in an environment right now where we're trying to get back to some kind of normalcy after this kind of chaotic time in terms of the tax law. So you've got to be quite careful in terms of people trying to promote this as an environment where, where schemers will thrive due to the environment, right? Due to the changes uh, in the code. So we, get, we do have to be quite careful in that type of environment. Hopefully things will settle back down and we'll get some consistency and we can do some long-term planning 
uh, once again, but we'll see. So these promoters charge large upfront fees or a fee that is contingent on the amount of the refund. Anytime you're dealing with a tax professional where they want a fee based on a contingent of the refund, or they seem to have some you know, scheme, some idea that they know about that no one else knows about or something like that. Uh, and obviously that type of scheme, I know about something no one else does, that type of thing is a lot more easier for those kinds of, you know, it's a dishonest type of scheme usually, but it's more prevalent. It, it'll work more often in an environment where the tax code is changing because they're going to say, well, these people just don't know it. The tax code changed. We got to hit it now. We got to do it at this point in time. So you got to be careful whenever those two things happen or any one of those two things. Some, some person is saying, I know I have a secret knowledge that no one else knows, or someone is saying that, that, uh, they're, they're going to charge you based on the refund that they get you. Those are not good signs. And the promoters may not inform taxpayers that the wage deductions claimed on the business uh, federal income tax returns must be reduced by the amount of the credit. Quote, while this is a legitimate credit that was provided on financial lifeline to millions of businesses, uh, there continue to be promoters who aggressively mislead people and businesses into thinking they can claim these credits, end quote, said acting IRS Commissioner Doug O'Donnell, quote, anyone who is considering claiming this credit needs to carefully review the guidelines if the tax professional they're using raises questions about the accuracy of the employee retention credit claim, people should listen to their advice. The IRS is actively auditing and conducting criminal investigations related to these false claims. People need to think twice before claiming these, end quote. So we're at a time right now where there was a lot of loose money on the tax code and they're probably they're tightening up at this point in time. And that means they're probably looking to make some examples of people at this point in time that are that are going too far in and exploiting, like obviously was going to happen, the loosening up of, of the tax code. So again, you got to be quite uh, careful of that. It looks like their language here is sounding like they're getting uh, more aggressive in this particular area. So the IRS has been warning about these scheme since uh, last fall. There's links to that here, but there continue be, to be attempts to claim the ERC during the 2023 filing uh, season. Tax professionals note they continue to be pressured by people wanting to claim credits improperly. The IRS Office of Professional Responsibility is working on additional guidance for the tax professional community that will be available in the near future. Now, again, obviously, a lot of these changes, people are hearing a lot of things and they're saying, hey, all the people are getting this money from these changes in the tax code because of all the changes in the tax code. That puts a lot of pressure on tax preparers who are trying to keep up with the tax law, which is quite difficult because of the, the amount of tax law changes and the complexity with the laws and the fact that they're there's going to be bugs in them. They haven't been worked out over a long period of time as tax law typically should be laid out over a longer period of time, uh, you would think. So we got that issue. So people and businesses can avoid this scheme uh, and by not filing improper claims on the in the first place. So if business filed an income tax return deducting qualified wages before it filed an employment tax return claiming the credit, the business should file an amended income tax return to correct any overstated wage deductions. Okay, so businesses should be cautious of advertising schemes and direct um, solicitations promoting tax savings that are that are too good to be true. And I, I think some of this also kind of comes from the, the idea that the IRS was going to have these types of policies, meaning they're going to give money out first, and then later on, they're going to account for it on, on the tax return. So you've got these advanced credit payments that, that this idea that they kind of expanded on a lot over the last few years. You see it with the advanced child tax credit, the stimulus payments were advanced payments, they've got it with the insurance type of stuff, and some of these uh, taxes were a similar kind of thing with the payroll taxes in some cases where you might be able to you know, claim the credit before you file the return and whatnot. That, if there was gonna be corrupt people, that there's gonna be corrupt people, right? If there are scammers out there, then of course they can easily construct a scam, you would think, in those scenarios where they advertise that you're going to get this money and you do get the money because you got it in advance, but you had a, a claim that was overextended. And then when, it, when, they, when they have to actually file the return to claim the, the fact that they got an advanced payment, the, the, 
the scammer's gone. You know, you would think that would be a typical kind of scam in a situation where you have this money flowing, flowing out in advance kind of payments. So in any case, some people might be kind of stuck in a situation at this point in time where they, where they might have taken advanced money over what they should have been able to take because, and now, and now they've got to deal with that possibly by amending the prior returns because they've, they overstated it or whatever is going to happen at that point. Anyways, taxpayers are always responsible for the information reported on their tax returns. Improperly claiming the ERC could result in taxpayers being required to repay the credit along with penalties and interest. So that wouldn't be good. What is the ERC? The EREC is a refundable tax credit designed for businesses who continued paying employees while shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic or who had significant declines in gross receipts from March 13th, 2020 to December 31st, 2021. So you'll recall they did the social distancing thing. They shut down a bunch of businesses and then they tried to pay people to keep the employees on the payroll, uh, even though you don't need the employees if you shut down the business, right? So, so you've got this weird kind of situation. Obviously that can get quite complex to have qualifications for you holding on to the employees in order to get the credit and so on and so forth. So eligible taxpayers can claim the ERC on an original or amended employment tax return for a period within those dates. So to be eligible for the ERC, employers must have sustained a full or partial suspension of operations due to the orders from an appropriate governmental authority. There's a link to that here. Uh, limiting commerce, travel, or group meetings due to COVID-19 during 2020 or the first three quarters of 2021. Experience a significant decline in gross receipts during 2020. There's a link to that here. Or decline in gross receipts during the first three quarters of 2021. Or qualified as a recovery startup business for the third or fourth quarters of 2021. So completely clear as day, these rules. I don't see how anyone could have could have gotten it. A misconception about about that kind of stuff that was ruled out like overnight in like a 24-hour period. How can you? That's crystal clear. In any case, as a reminder, only recovery startup businesses are eligible for the ERC in the fourth quarter of 2021. Additionally, for any quarter, eligible employers cannot claim the ERC on wages that were reported as payroll costs in obtaining PPP loan forgiveness or that were used to claim certain other tax credits. Now, this is the other thing that got all messy because you've had these PPP loans, which are called a loan, but if you were in compliance with the PPP loan, then you might be able to forgive the loan. So then you've got these issues of do the PPP loan count as income if the loan was forgiven? And if you take the PPP loan, which required you to hold on or pay some portion of payroll, can you also double dip by getting some kind of advantage from the ERC, even though you also got the PPP? So it's not, but it's not confusing. If you messed it up, that's because, you know, you, that's your fault. Anyways, to report tax related uh, illegal activities related to ERC claims, submit by fax or mail a, a completed form 14242, report suspected abusive tax promotions or preparers. There's a link to that here. And any supporting materials to the IRS Lead Development Center and the Office of Promoter Investigations. So there's a mailing address here if you need that. There'll be a link to this so you can check it out if you so choose. The employers should also report instances of fraud in IRS related phishing attempts to the IRS at, there's a phishing email, phishing at irs.gov and Treasury Inspector General Tax Administration. There's a number here that you can call. Go to irs.gov to learn more about eligible requirements and how to claim the employee retention credit for qualified wages paid after March 12th, 2020 and before January 1st, 2021. You've got notice 2021-20, 2021-49 and revenue procedure 2021-33 for quarters wages paid after December 31st, 2020 and before July 1st, 2021. You've got other set of notices and revenue procedures for the quarter paid after June 30th, 2021 and before October 1st, 2021. You've got another set of notices and, and procedures. And then for the quarter of wages after September 30th, 2021 uh, and before January 1st, 2022, you've got another set of notices. So, I mean, all the material is here, people. All the material is here. There's no excuse for, for, for messing this thing up. So don't give me, don't give me that. Look at all this stuff. It's right there.
Additional information, if that wasn't enough, we have more information. There's the employee retention credit 2020 versus 2021 comparison chart. We've got the Form 941X instructions, April 2022 revision for use in in conjunction with Form 941 instructions for relevant calendar quarter. You got the Form 941 instructions for December 2021 revision. You got the Form 941 instructions 2020 revision. You got the Form 943, 943X, 944, 944X, CT1 and CT1X instructions. All that stuff's here. So just, you know, glance, you know, give it a read. Give the stuff a read for crying out loud. And there'll be links to that here. And there'll be a link to this in the description.